Thank you. And, um, yeah, thanks for turning up and having a listen um, to what I've got to say about, about nutrition. But I just have to kind of preface it by saying, you know, this is a really kind of generalised overview, overview, but I really want to try and um, just introduce you to some of the major um, nutrients that you need to kind of be considering throughout each trimester and then as you move into breastfeeding. So let's start with the first trimester. And I, and I kind of look at this trimester is really the design. This is that extraordinary time when all of the DNA from dad and all of the DNA from mum come together to design this beautiful child. But what I did want to just introduce a little bit to you is the concept of epigenetics, which is kind of getting a lot of attention with nutritional research these days. And what epigenetics really looks at is how we can impact our genetics. So even though the genetics are decided, it looks at the role that nutrition not only has on our um, the early childhood health of our child, but also how it can impact upon children's lifelong health and reduce their risk of chronic disease in later life. And a lot of this nutrition is most important in that first trimester. So that's why I just really wanted to kind of introduce the concept to you. And that we know that that very, very early embryonic de development time is so susceptible to these influences. And again, I'm just trying not to get bogged down with a whole lot of research, but it's just that this was a, a, a paper that was published a couple of years ago, which was just kind of termed Everyday Epigenetics, and it was published in the Journal of Science and Medicine. And it actually did look at very, very everyday interventions, like a healthy diet, like drinking enough water, like exercising, getting enough sleep, and the, even people who were eating too much junk food and how that really profoundly impacted on not only their children's health in those early few years, but how that really, they followed children through into their adulthood and how much it can impact upon them, not only developing um, uh, learning disorders, but going on to autoimmune dis disorders and even chronic health later in life. So yeah, while we're looking at the first trimester, the nutrition that we're particularly wanting to emphasise at this stage is nutrition that is going to um, be involved in the early brain and nervous system development of our child, which is all happening at this kind of exponential rate in the first few weeks of pregnancy. What I also want to remind you of is that um, that fetus's development and growth is totally dependent on mum's thyroid function. So it's also important to kind of include nutrition which will impact upon the thyroid function of mum. And the amazing thing is that our production of thyroid hormones in that first trimester actually doubles to allow for this exponential kind of growth. And also a lot of the, re a lot of the symptoms that we experience in the first trimester, like feeling really tired and sleepy and constipated and a bit moody and everything, is all actually due to our thyroid kind of struggling with the growth at this time. The other nutrients that I want to introduce that are particularly important during the first trimester are the nutrients of genetic expression. And folic acid gets a lot of attention and we all know that we need to take folic acid before we conceive and during these early months. But I also want to kind of introduce to you a few other nutrients that really are just as important as folic acid, like B12, vitamin D and iodine, which are all very important nutrients that can improve the outcomes of our offspring. But you can't ignore folic acid because it is so profound and it, it, and it is so important. And why we actually do often need to supplement with folic acid is because it is actually quite difficult to get in our diet. And it is actually quite difficult for a first trimester mum to eat a lot of it because she's often feeling kind of really nauseous and seedy and ordinary. But where you will find most of the... Um, folic acid is in actually in all our green leafy vegetables. So it is in the spinaches and kales and rocket and all our be um, beans and peas and avocados, things like that. And these, of course, are foods that often women don't feel like eating in our first trimester. So we're often encouraging women to throw them into soups or make green smoothies or just mix them up into stir fries so mums don't have to kind of sit down to a whole huge bowl of greens. 
Um, and just to also let you know that even though um, folic acid is so important for genetic expression and chromosomal outcomes of our children, a lot of people don't realise that folic acid is also just as important to minimise the risk of developmental disorders like ADHD and definitely autism. There's been some great research around that we can find um, folate deficiency in kids who are at risk of developing um, learning disorders. The other nutrient that is so important during the first trimester, and we are now finding that pre pregnant and breastfeeding mums, 50% of pregnant and breastfeeding mums out there are actually deficient, is iodine. And thankfully, iodine is getting a lot more kind of attention now, and you'll see it included in a lot of the kind of prenatal vitamins. But it's a vital nutrient for our thyroid function. It absolutely reduces um, miscarriage risk as well, which is something that we have to be aware of during this first trimester. It's also important that you know that, yes, our, you know, us kind of funky naturopathic types will bang on about a lot of this nutritional stuff, but even WHO now declares that Australia is a mildly deficient iodine country and recommends that women should take at least 150 micrograms during pregnancy. And our National Health and Medical Research Council here in Australia is now recommending that mums need to take about 225 micrograms during pregnancy, not only to uh, minimise the risk of miscarriage, but again to reduce um, less than ideal developmental kind of outcomes in our offspring. We find that iodine um, can impact upon children's IQ and again increase their risk of developing ADD or ADHD. So when we're talking about our foods during the first trimester, what I just want to kind of give a bit of an overview of what we do recommend for our mums during this time because it is often hard for them to get their nutrition in at this time because they're not really kind of craving those really healthy foods. But, you know, I just say to mums, do it one mouthful at a time, you know. So you might not get it perfect every day, but if you kind of start with good habits at breakfast, it can kind of continue a better day. So having protein at all our meals is actually important. And a lot of the nutrients that I'm talking about today, you will find in our protein foods. So our protein foods are meat and fish and eggs and nuts and seeds and a lot of our legumes, beans. So even if women are struggling to get food down, you know, even if it's a handful of nuts or some nut butter on a cracker or a couple of tablespoons of yogurt, it will provide a lot of these macronutrients. Even if it's in a smoothie or a soup, chicken stock in a soup or something, if she's struggling to get it in. And that we also suggest during this first trimester that often our main meals become smaller, but our morning and afternoon tea kind of need to be bigger. And you will find that women's blood sugar levels are much more balanced throughout the day when they're eating regularly at, you know, regular br breaks throughout the day. And they're much more less likely to have those cravings and to feel really seedy and sick if each of those meals or snacks does contain some protein foods. There's a couple of recommendations there for nausea as well, like warm, slow-cooked foods, soups, stews, really easily digestible food will actually help with women and their symptoms of nausea. Miso soup can be great. Coconut water can also be really helpful. And also to make sure that women are having an increase in carbohydrates. They're often increase, um, craving those carbohydrates, but we can get them from better sources like baked sweet potato or good mueslis and granolas or breads and crackers that are filled with kind of seeds, which will provide, you know, pr protein as well as carbohydrate. So I'm not going to read through, bore you with reading through all those foods, but a couple of things that I do want to bring your attention to is some of the choline foods. There's a lot of emerging research about choline being just as important for folic acid to reduce our risk of having babies with neural tube defects, miscarriage, chromosomal aberrations. Um, and again, in all those protein foods that I've already mentioned. And also the B6 foods. B6 um, is the nutrient that really, really helps with nausea in the first trimester. And again, you'll find B6 in all those protein foods and a lot of our greens, nuts and seeds. And, and it's the reason behind why women who eat a lot of nuts and seeds in first trimester can help with their symptoms of nausea. Folic acid, as I said, is in all your green leafies. And iodine you'll find in our seafood. Seafood, salt and seaweed. Eggs are also a good source of iodine. And cacao is a good source of iodine too. So if you're looking for a little sweet treat, you're better to find something that's cacao-based or make yourself something that's cacao-based that can help with those sweet treats but also give you a good dose of iodine. 
Remembering to stay hydrated at this time as well. And women can often struggle with water, but you can get it with co coconut water or mineral water or broths and soups, miso soups as well. Okay, so let's move into the second trimester, which I kind of describe as the sca scaffolding. This is the real building time. And it's often kind of, you know, that lovely window where women actually do feel a little, little bit better when she's come out of feeling so ordinary in the first trimester and heading into the th third trimester where she's going to feel big and heavy and tired. So I really encourage women at this time to use it as her restorative trimester. You know, try and put some practices in about some regular exercise. Ensure you're getting enough sleep because this is the time that women are often feeling actually at their best. So it is kind of, you know, important to use it for your benefit. But because it's this real building trimester, it's all those heavy hitting big kind of macronutrients are important at this time. Those nutrients that build bones and build muscles and build all the organs of our developing baby. So some of these new nutrients that I did want to just kind of introduce to you is, is things like zinc. Um, zinc is the most commonly deficient nutrient in pregnant women, both preconceptionally and during pregnancy. And a lot of the common symptoms of um, that women do experience during pregnancy are associated with zinc deficiency. And what women really need to know is that zinc really improves the efficacy of our contractions. It will reduce the length of labour and it can also reduce a lot of the side effects like stretch marks that we often kind of experience, which are all those symptoms where we're having too much growth. So that's where we need to get these big building nutrients in. Iron is also one of our big builders and why women are so commonly deficient as well. And it is the most common deficiency in the world. Um, what low iron is associated with is definitely low birth weight babies and an increased likelihood of preterm delivery. And that's why we've got to kind of get that into women in that second trimester. A lot of women will need to supplement at this time because babies, basically, by the time we have a deliver a full-time baby, they're made up of about 500 to 1,000 milligrams of iron. So that's a lot of iron we need to get in. So again, these big building nutrients come from our protein foods. They come from our meat and fish and eggs and all our legumes and pulses as well. So again, in this second trimester, women need to have a lot of those. So I'm giving you some examples there of iron and zinc, but it's important that women test for their iron as well, just in case they do need to supplement. Okay, let's move into the third trimester which is the beautiful kind of finished product where we've gone from the design phase into the building phase and this is the delivery of this perfect, beautiful, um, fully formed baby. And again, nutrition is very important in the third trimester because that baby's weight triples during this time and there's some certain nutrients that we need to particularly give attention to at this time. And so what I focus on with my women during this time is those nutrients that are gonna not, not only going to kind of support this growth, but also help her kind of move into um, a really healthy and uncomplicated labour and a lovely transition into a breastfeeding experience after she's delivered her baby. We also need to look at the nutrients that are going to reduce a lot of the common risks of third trimester that we see, which are things like hypertension, uh, which is blood pressure, Gestational, diabe gestational diabetes and preeclampsia. And also I really like to support women's, that look at the nutrients that support women's energy and mood during this time because a lot of women are starting to get anxious about what's actually to come, not just as far as labour but this lifelong child that they're kind of responsible for. So the, the nutrients that are most important at this time are calcium and magnesium. And again, coming back to this extraordinary wisdom of the pregnant body that our calcium absorption increases by about 50% from the second trimester onwards because we need to build bones and muscles of our developing baby. Um, with the peak demand being during this trimester. And calcium and magnesium kind of coexist together. They need to be, um, they're often in the same foods and often when we supplement them, we supplement them in combination. And calcium is the nutrient that's most responsible for the effectiveness of our contractions and magnesium is what helps our uterus rela relax in between our contractions. So they're both really important nutrients for a healthy and productive labour. We know that... Um, 
calcium, there's lots and lots of studies around cal calcium and there's really good sound evidence that shows that it does reduce the risk of developing preeclampsia. It also reduces the tendency to leg cramps um, and, and hypertension. And with magnesium as well. And magnesium will also really help. I often get my women to take or have calcium and magnesium foods or to take their calcium and magnesium supplement before they go to bed so they can have a, have a more restful sleep, less chance of cramps and restless legs and those common third trimester symptoms and that they wake up feeling better rested and that we know that women who are well-fed and well-rested are going to have a better experience during labour. I just want to quickly touch on probiotics because there is lots of great evidence out there for probiotics in the third trimester and we definitely see this clinically in our clinic as well that women who are having a lot of probiotic foods at this time or supplementing with a decent probiotic are much less likely to deliver babies with allergies, intolerances re and reflux. And that, you know, we've just, I've just provided a bit of a picture of yogurt there because that provides calcium, magnesium and probiotics. So trying to have um, those probiotic foods are really important in this third trimester. So what do we want to kind of concentrate on this time? Again, it's all those big macronutrients like iron, calcium and magnesium at that time. Just to remind you that uh, calcium and magnesium we do get from our protein foods. Calcium is particularly from dairy and a lot of our green leafy vegetables. But we also get a lot of, for women who are dairy intolerant, we get a lot of calcium from fish. Foods like sardines filled with calcium. And magnesium again from the protein foods but also nuts and seeds. Just to quickly touch on caffeine and alcohol, um, there is no safe limit for alcohol in pregnancy. Um, all the studies kind of confirm that. But also to be aware of caffeine too, that we know that there is really good evidence out there for women who are, any, women who are drinking anything more than one cup of a caffeinated beverage daily are going to have an increased likelihood of not only miscarriage but preterm delivery. So please be aware of really minimising your caffeine. So in summary, what are we looking for, you know, generally as the most optimal diet for a, a pregnancy diet? I always tell women that the Mediterranean diet is, is the best kind of diet we should be eating during pregnancy. And it does correlate with um, I increased fertility as well. So the kind of foods that we, we would see in the Med Mediterranean diet is lots of colours, lots of vegetables, all those green leafy vegetables which are full of folic acid and all those healthy fats like olive oil and salmon, beans, legumes and good sources of protein. I might skip through this. I know that I'm going to time a bit. Um, and just to also transition into, the, into breastfeeding, that um, calcium and magnesium that I introduced in the third trimester, and that's when you really need to increase your calcium and magnesium before you are even breastfeeding. But also I just wanted to give some attention to vitamin D, which is also an epidemic of um, deficiency out there, even with even with women here in Australia, again, we know about 50% of women are vitamin D deficient. And our, both our vitamin D um, absorption and calcium goes up when we're bre breastfeeding. And you need enough vitamin D to get calcium into your breast milk as well. Low vitamin D is, again, linked to allergies in our children, autoimmune conditions, and babies will be low birth weight and not sleep nearly as well. So vitamin D is important. And I'll often suggest to women, make sure you get it tested. Um, and where do we get our vitamin D? So we get it from fish, eggs, and we get it from sunshine. So, you know, women making sure they're going for a, a walk in the third trimester and whilst they're breastfeeding can just give you a good kind of hit of vitamin D as well. So with breastfeeding foods, um, and again, it's an extension of a lot of the protein foods and the good sources of carbohydrate that I talked about it during pregnancy as well and really trying to look for healthy carbohydrates. So it is oats and brown rice and all those lovely roasted veggies, healthy granolas, mueslis, those kind of foods as carbohydrate foods. And obviously the calcium and magnesium foods and vitamin D. But I also want to talk to you about fats. What breast milk is, it's water and it's fat. And we have to be making sure that we're getting good sources of fat in our diet. Babies are fat. We want them to be chubby and fat. So you want your milk to be fat as well. So, and, and a lot of women kind of go for low fat and everything. And I really discourage women to do that at this time. So you want to be getting all your 
full fats and that's in dairy, that's in butter, that's in olive oil, that's in coconut oil, fish and eggs. All those high fat foods are what help build really healthy breast milk for your baby. And the other thing that's in breast milk is water. 80% of it is actually water. So you want to be making sure you're well hydrated. And we suggest to women that they need about three litres of water daily whilst they're actually breastfeeding. Um, and so just looking at, you know, the kind of foods that to try and make it easy for women, having smoothies, having soups, Again, you know, making sure that we're well hydrated. Having all those slow-cooked soups and bone broths and stews and everything, again, will provide those um, nutrients. Sprouts as well. I often suggest for women to have lots of sprouts in their salads. There's great evidence about sprouts being a great, um, you know, milk-boosting food. And just to conclude, that's just a little bit of a herbal tea that I often give my women as a suggestion when they're breastfeeding, not only because it actually boosts the production of breast milk, but we often see when women are drinking that um, herbal tea that their babies are more settled, less colicky, will sleep better. And thank you so much for listening and I welcome any questions and I'm on stand D25 if you um, wanted to talk about any of the nutrition further. Have a great day. Thank you.